Hi there, you're in the lab with your mate JJ. Today is Maxitronics Day. Today we're going to be doing a Maxitronics um, project. Um, this is the, uh, the Maxitronics uh, Sensor Robot 20, which we're working our way through. There's 20 projects on this uh, project lab. Um, today we're up to project 11, which is uh, the burglar alarm. So um, I'll, uh, I'll pop you over to the computer and we'll have a look at the instructions together. Then we'll pop over to the booth and uh, build the kit. And then once that's done, we'll pop over to the bench and we'll have a look at it underneath the scope and the, um, and, and the, the test equipment, the thermal cam and that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, first things first, let's jump on the computer and have a look at the instructions. Here we are on the computer. I might just take off those glasses. Now, um, <clears throat> it's going to fire up a web browser here. All right. Now, I uploaded this earlier. So here we are. This is the... Uh, uh, Maxitronics 21 um, Project 11 instructions. So uh, what it does, this project makes use of the properties of the read sensor switch. Um, once you wire the project, attach the small magnet to any item you don't want moved. As long as the magnet is next to the read switch, all is calm. But if someone should attempt to remove the item from the vicinity of the switch, your sensor robot sounds the alarm. Even if the magnet, magnet is put back in its original spot, the buzzer continues to sound. Attach the bar magnet to a length of string with tape. Uh, tape the other end of the string to the valuable item. Place the magnet next to the read switch on your robot. When your burglar attempts to take the property, the string is pulled and the magnet comes away from the switch. Your sensor robot does the rest. Only you can silence the robot by pressing the key while you position the magnet next to the switch. It's your and the sensor robot's secret. Dear me, that's security through obscurity. We shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> of course, this is just an excuse to, to show you how to, to do the, uh, this multi-vibrator down here. Um, how it works. Uh, if the read switch is kept closed, and this is the key here on pins 18 and 16, if the read switch is kept closed, transistor Q5, uh, uh, Q5 is here. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Q5 remains off because the voltage between its base, which is here, uh, and its emitter is uh, zero volts. Uh, block one. Oh, this is the key. This is the read switch. Sorry, my bad. This is the read switch. This is the key. Okay. So, um, uh, block one. Now, that's not labeled here. It must be down here. Yes, block one. Okay. Which is, uh, looks like Q1. I'm going to zoom in on that a bit. So let's say Q3 and Q4 by the looks, doesn't it? Q1, Q2. Okay. So, um, sorry, let's just read it. Uh, block 1 is a bistable multivibrator circuit. Q2 goes off when Q1 turns on. So this is block 1 here. Um, if the read switch is kept off, electricity flows to the base of Q5. Okay. And uh, turns transistor Q5 on. Because of this, a short circuit occurs between the base and emitter of Q1. It's the base and the emitter of Q1. And turns it off. If the transistor Q1 is off, and Q2 is on, Q6 operates. Then the output of the multivibrator sends a signal to the base of Q6. So this multivibrator creates the tone. 
uh, and this is the base of Q6 uh, and the buzzer sounds uh, because the state of Q1 is unchanged the buzzer continues to beep even if the switch is turned on and transistor Q5 is turned off but if you press the key while the read switch is on the beeping stops because Q2 is turned off and Q1 is turned on there you go uh, now th these are both multi vibrators um, I'm not sure really exactly what type they are it didn't explain that to us did it uh, it said uh, block one. Uh, block one is a bistable multi vibrator. There you go. So um, I'm pretty sure this was block one bistable multi vibrator. Did it say what kind of? Uh, I'm not sure what kind of multi vibrator this is. Uh, Give me a second and I'll see if I can figure it out. Okay, I'm back. Um, so yeah, the um, the the uh, vib multi vibrator here is called a bistable multi vibrator, and this uh, one over here, which creates the tone, is called an astable multi vibrator. Um, so that's everything. This is the wiring diagram. So uh, let's go together to the booth and we'll put this thing together. Here we are in the booth. So um, <clears throat> we're going to be uh, putting the project together. Before we do, we'll just uh, take the wires out of the previous projects. So we'll do that first. All right. So uh, we got all the wires out of the previous one. I left that in there because you always need the you always need that there. So uh, next, we'll follow the instructions which are uh, over here. Um, and uh, just uh, wire this guy up. So we'll do that now. And that's it, we're all wired up, so um, we'll take this over to the bench and see if it works. Here we are on the bench. So um, the first thing we'll do is just find one of our magnets. So we've got a magnet here. Um, we'll put that next to our reed switch. This is our, uh, our key. Okay. All right. So we're going to need some power. Have we got power? We don't. All right. Uh, just give me a second and I'll arrange for some power. All right. Well, I got some power. So we'll put uh, negative on that side and positive on that side. And we'll put this at... Uh, 9 volts um, and uh, we'll power that on alright now what happened to our magnet it's come all the way over here alright now okay I don't think our read switch is working very well. I, uh, uh, what are we going to do? Let's uh, grab our trusty multimeter over here. A bit of room there. Now we're going to need 
some uh, probes. These are my fluke probes. So we'll put that in common and that there. Actually, you know, what would be good is some, uh, I want to hook hook clips, let me see. I'll just go, uh, I'll go digging, I'll be back in a sec. Alright, so I've just taken a little bit of an interlude to, uh, to make some cables. Um, I needed uh, some hook clips for my multimeter, so I just went and made these cables. The, there'll be a video um, that comes out um, before this video, in fact, so uh, of me making these cables. It took me quite a while, actually, um, but uh, <coughs> it's done now. So uh, the problem we're having here is it seems like the uh, reed switch isn't working properly. So what I'm going to do is just check it with the continuity tester. So uh, put that on there, that on there. I've got my new hook clips. So uh, put that on continuity mode and we'll just check that it's working. Yep, it's working. So let's put on one side and the other side. Okay. Seems to be working okay. So, uh, okay, that's good to know. So the read switch seems to be working. Um, so let's try this again. Power him on. Okay. Now, that shouldn't... Ah, uh, there we go. Now, if we push that away... Yep. Wonderful. Interesting. All right, and we. So, um, just to be clear, this is a a, a bi-stable multi-vibrator. So when we move the magnet away, the reed switch will change state. Um, and uh, we need to hold that down and bring that back in and then release and that resets it. Um, if you take the magnet away and then put the magnet back, that's not enough to, to reset the circuit. So you need both of them to reset it. Uh, I don't think any part of this is going to get hot, so I'm not going to put this particular one under the... Um, under the uh, thermal cam. Oh, why not? Just give me a sec. I'll set up the thermal cam and we'll do it. All right, I've got the uh, the scope on and the thermal cam on. Uh, you can see uh, <coughs> on the thermal cam there, uh, we've got our three resist uh, transistors down the bottom here. Uh, this one, this one, and this one, you can see that they're all drawing power and they're a little bit warm. Uh, now, I'm going to move the magnet and when I do, um, the uh, the alarm will trigger. Um, it'll start making a racket, and you'll see uh, the the only really interesting uh, signal on this particular circuit is the a stable multi vibrator that creates the tone. So the tone's a bit noisy, um, but um, when I move the uh, the magnet away from the reed switch, uh, it will trigger the alarm, and then we'll see that on the oscilloscope there. So just watching that. And you see that that uh, that on the scope there at the moment is just the, um, the the pulse that's generating the tone. And if I put the magnet back and press the key, then uh, the the tone stops. Uh, you can see the multimeters. Uh, sorry, the the oscilloscope's just picking up uh, a little bit of uh, uh, of the um, the signal that that would be going uh, if the if the transistor was on. So, uh, yes, I think that concludes uh, this project. So I'll, I'll throw you over to the farewell cam and we'll wrap up. And that's a wrap. 
so uh, that was uh, project 11 of our sensor robot 20 uh, that was the burglar alarm it used the, uh, the 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 read switch let's turn that power off there so um, Um, yes, the, the magnetic read switch down here was uh, what, what triggered the alarm. This was the reset key. Um, you, you, you need to trigger set both to reset the circuit. Um, the uh, bi-stable multi-vibrator um, handled the input and then the a-stable multi-vibrator created the tone which got sent through to the buzzer. So um, we showed you the tone on the oscilloscope. Um, you could see uh, three of the transistors that were um, uh, getting warm. So uh, that was good. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I had to take a small uh, detour while I was making uh, this video to make these cables. I, I, I made that as a separate video. So that's going to have come out as well by now. So uh, yeah, that's everything. Um, I'm going to uh, do the next uh, project soon. Uh, what's coming up next? Let me just check. This was the burglar alarm, project 11. And project 12, which I'll be getting out soon, is a magnetism detector. Magnetism detector. So looking forward to that. Um, thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, please remember to hit like and subscribe.